What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Hawk, and welcome back to another episode of Hawk's Hoops. I know it's been a while. We're not going to talk about it. The NBA offseason is pretty much in full swing. And by full swing, I mean it's pretty much over. All the exciting stuff have happened. We had the draft. Summer League's over. All the big names have signed. And at this point, for the most part, we're just waiting for the season to start. But while we wait for the season to start, we're in this weird moment where there's a couple of players who are still looking for a home, still looking for a team, still think they have something to bring to the game, something that they can bring that makes a team better and right now they don't have a team they're going to play for next season and it's always sad to see players who were pretty much in the prime of their career when i started watching basketball come to the tail end of their career and teams not really want to sign them anymore so the first player we got to talk about is carmelo anthony Melo is in a very weird spot because Melo is someone who we all know has been an excellent scorer has been a superstar in my opinion who probably end up in the hall of fame he's been a great player for most of his career and it just seems like these last couple of years he took a really hard nosedive some people will go as far to say the media is kind of blackballing him and just giving him a bad reputation and no one wants to sign him if you don't know carmelo recently went on a one-on-one -on -one interview with stephen a smith on first take and in that interview they talked about some of the reasons that carmelo thinks that he's not on the team yet. And one of the things Carmelo talked about was his departure from the Houston Rockets last season. This is really interesting because no one in the league really knew kind of what went down with that. Basically, Melo said after 10 games into the season, the Rockets GM basically came up to him and said, hey, your services are no longer needed. And when that happened, I thought another team was gonna try to make a move to pick him up mid season, but that never happened. The media kept saying, who's gonna get Carmelo? Who's gonna get Carmelo? No one got Carmelo. No one has Carmelo now. And I think a big thing that's going on in the league right now is that a lot of GMs are scared to sign Carmelo Anthony because of the media circus that surrounded him in Houston when he was there. What happened in OKC, that didn't really work out. And I think a lot of people felt that Melo wasn't ready or wasn't willing to take a bench role. But Melo went out to say on first take that he's come to grips with where he is at in his career. He's ready to take that bench role. And I do really think Melo would be a great asset to a team. He's a guy who's seen some success in his league. League. He's been in the league for a long time. He'd be a good veteran presence for some young guys on the team. You would bring him off the bench, and honestly, Melo could even play a stretch four role, in my opinion. I think he's just gonna have to take a GM who truly believes that Melo's ready and willing to come off the bench to sign him. The next person on my list, Jamal Crawford. Now, if you look at Jamal Crawford's numbers from last year, you're gonna be like, hey, yo, Hulk, he done. He he done. Let him let him go. He done. He didn't put up great numbers for the Timberwolves last year, but it's not his numbers is why I think Jamal Crawford would be great in the league. So I follow a lot of NBA players on Twitter. I'm on Twitter a lot. I pay attention to NBA Twitter. And there's a lot of players who think that Jamal Crawford would be a great addition to teams, should be in the league still. They understand the type of player he is, the type of veteran presence he brings, and just the the culture that is Jamal Crawford. For the longest, it seemed like he was always in the running for six man in the year. He is known as a great bench player. And I don't think his impact necessarily would be felt on the court, but if a team's looking for some veteran presence, if a team is looking for a locker room guy that can teach some of their young guys on how this league works, Jamal Crawford could be that guy. I'm thinking of young teams like the Hawks, the Bulls, the Kings, the Suns. Young teams that have a lot of young pieces that to be honest, aren't necessarily in playoff running this year, maybe outside of the Kings, just are trying to develop players. They got some bright stars, they got some young talent, and they're just trying to develop them. Jamal Crawford's your guy. And the last player on my list, Lynn Sanity. So Jeremy Lynn recently did a press conference, I believe, don't quote me on this, I didn't do my research like I should have. I believe he was in China, he was at a press conference or asked him a couple of questions and they got to the topic of free agency and where he's at now. Jeremy Lin got a little emotional. He was saying that he feels that the NBA has turned its back on him, that he, you know, he put in all this work and now no one wants to sign him. And it kind of sucked for Jeremy Lin because Jeremy Lin was never, you know, I'll say an all-star or a star caliber player. I mean, outside of Lin Sanity for that one or two seasons, but he's always been a quality guard. The reason I brought Jeremy Lin up on this list is, to be honest, I don't think a team will sign him. I don't think a team will pick him up, especially after seeing that press conference. This, this might sound rude, but he looks desperate. It's like the thing that I thought was weird about the Jeremy Lin press conference is that he said he would not encourage his son to join the NBA. Which blew my mind to me. He had a solid 10 year career. He made over $65 million. He was a great role model to young Chinese basketball players to see someone go to the NBA. He was the first person from Harvard to make it in the NBA. His story is great. So would I love to see him in the league? Yes. Do I have an idea of a team that would pick him up? 
to be honest with you, no. I think his situation would be similar to Jamal Crawford's in the sense that it'd be a team that's looking for a veteran to be a good locker room presence for some young guys. But I think there's other veterans out there who had a greater career that would be able to give better insight to some of the young players. I find it interesting when we talk about players who we all know who can still hoop in the NBA, who are better than some of the players in the NBA. When I'm thinking about Carmelo Anthony, I'm thinking about Jamal Crawford. I know they're better than some players who are already signed a contract, but it comes a point when NBA teams have to decide if they want to pay an older guy to be a veteran present to give a certain level of production that they know they're going to get, or if they're willing to pay a younger guy who's not necessarily known who could be a project player that can blossom into something better and it just seems like a lot of nba teams are looking to get younger and find the next stars in the league sucks but that's the way it is and in going into it these players had to know at some point their career was coming to an end so i wish them the best of luck i would love to see him still in the league i just don't know if it'll happen or not let me know in the comments down below who is one player who isn't signed yet and is still a free agent that you really want to see get picked up by a team this year thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next one i'm out